You want to improve the quality of your stream? Let's talk about how to do it, and we're not going to spend a single dollar making this better. Welcome on in. My name is Mo. This is Mo Reigns Gaming, and today we are talking about the compressor. What's up, everybody? It's Mo. Today, I wanted to talk about compression. So you've got stream up and you're playing a game or you're recording a let's play for YouTube and something awesome happens and you wanna celebrate and so you scream and then your microphone distorts. It goes into the red and it sounds awful and we don't want that, right? And this is where the compressor comes into play. A compressor is a way for you to put a cap on your input so that it doesn't distort and start to sound all gargled when you get excited. We wanna use compression because our voice is dynamic, right? We talked about this in my video about noise gates. Link in the description, by the way. Because your voice is a dynamic instrument. You wanna be able to celebrate when something awesome happens. It's exciting, not just for you, but for your audience as well. So let's open up Streamlabs OBS here. We're gonna bring up a compressor. We're gonna break down all of the components so that A, we can understand what a compressor is and B, why it's so important for you to use it in your content. Let's move on over. We have our compressor pulled up in Streamlabs OBS here. For the purposes of today's video, we're gonna think vertical thoughts, okay? We're gonna think about filling a room up with sound from floor to ceiling, because what we're doing with the compressors is, again, we're putting a cap on our input. We're, we're putting a ceiling on the room and we are adjusting the height of it so that we have control of our sound here. We have control of our volume. So just like with the noise gate video, we're going a bit out of order here. The first thing we're gonna address is threshold. And we talked about this briefly in the noise gate video. Negative uh, 32.2 here, this is our decibel level or our dBs. Just know that the closer we are to zero, the louder the sound or the greater the sound pressure we're talking about. For the purposes of this uh, video, zero is as loud as it's going to get. So your threshold is your ceiling, okay? Again, we're thinking vertically, we're talking about filling a room up with sound. Your threshold is where the ceiling is. So as soon as I get loud enough, as soon as I build up enough sound pressure to get to 32.2 under zero or negative 32.2, this is where the compressor is going to come into play. Next up is ratio. So we're talking about filling a room up with sound and our threshold is our ceiling. Our ratio is the angle of that ceiling. And this is where it can get a little weird and confusing, but also where it gets fun. Picture a garden hose and you have water flowing out of the end of the garden hose. And if you take your thumb and you start to cover up the end of the hose, the jet stream of water will get stronger and stronger and stronger. The more you cover up or the more you compress the water flow. And this is what we're talking about with ratio here is essentially how steep of an angle we have on our thumb over the end of the water hose here. Just like with noise gates, we want our compression to sound natural. Your voice is unique, it's your own. It has characteristics that no one else's voice has. And so we wanna embrace those characteristics because that's one of the things that makes our content our own. That's what makes our content stand out from someone else's is our voice. The danger with compressors is if you aren't using it correctly, if you are over compressing your voice and really crunching down on things, you start to lose those little idiosyncrasies. You start to lose the things that make your voice your voice. And so it's important when we're doing this to understand exactly what the threshold is and what the ratio is so that we can have control, but still have that nice natural sound. And most importantly, still have your unique voice stand out. Moving down here to talk about attack and release time, just like with noise gates, these times are set in milliseconds and their function is very, very similar. So my attack time is set to 29 or 29 one hundredths of a second, very, very fast. This is how quickly the compressor is going to engage once we've reached that threshold of sound. And then moving down here to release time, mine's set to 194, so basically two tenths of a second. This is how quickly or slowly the compressor will let go once we've gone back down below that threshold, basically once things have quieted down a bit. 
Our attack and our release time are where we determine whether we sound natural or robotic. And as always, we want natural. So the way that I have my compressor set up is it will compress the sound pretty immediately if I yell or something loud happens. And then it will also let go relatively quickly so that my voice doesn't stay compressed, but also so that I don't abruptly sound so loud again. If we took our release time and we cranked it all the way up to a thousand or one full second, even after I quieted back down, my voice would remain compressed and gradually it would go from sounding real crunched and tiny to eventually opening back up and sounding more dynamic and like my voice actually sounds again, which isn't what we want. So I keep mine down here around 200 or so so that my voice gets compressed and doesn't get out of control, but it also lets go in a relatively natural sounding amount of time. Lastly, we have our output gain here. This is volume control. So within the compressor, mine's set to 4.5. This gives me a four and a half decibel boost to my volume before it reaches the output. So it, it turns the mic up a little bit within the compressor. A quick note about output gain. You wanna do as much of your gain control or your volume control at your interface as possible. Whether you're using a physical interface like the Go XLR or the Scarlett 2i2, or if you use a digital interface, that's where you wanna set the gain or the volume for your mic as much as you can. If you do a lot of it within a compressor or digitally, it will start to sound a little tinny. It'll start to sound a little noisy. So just remember, do as much gain control or as much volume control at your interface as as you possibly can. Just like with our voice, the games that we play and the music that we're listening to are going to fluctuate in volume. They're also dynamic. And guess what? I compress those too. Not a lot, but enough that I have control over my soundscape. When I am streaming or creating content for YouTube, I want my voice to carry over everything else and compression allows me to do that. Compression allows me to control my entire soundscape so I make sure that everything can be heard at exactly the volume I want it to be heard at, but that my voice doesn't get buried in all of the other sounds that are going on around me. Just like with the rest of audio production, compression can be a little difficult to wrap our brains around because you have to use your ears, not your eyes, to really determine what's going on. Truthfully, the best advice I can offer for figuring out how to use these tools is to get out there and start using them. If you have something like Adobe Audition, open up a session, put a compressor on your voice, crank it all the way down so you can hear what it sounds like when you're overly compressed, and then start to roll things back so you can hear what it sounds like as it starts to let go. If you're streaming, I highly recommend going back and watching your VODs after every single stream so that you can hear what you sound like in the general soundscape of things, so that you can hear what you sound like when you're talking to chat. Just as important, if you have a friend who can hop in and watch and help you make adjustments live and on the fly, it's gonna help you out so, so much. Thank you so much for coming by and hanging out. I love talking about audio and sharing the things that I know. If there's something that I didn't cover that you have a question on, post it down in the comments below. I would love to continue to make these videos and talk about this stuff. I also stream over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash MoRains. I'll put the link in the description, but you can find me there Monday to Friday starting at 9 a.m. CST. If you wanna chat about this live, click the link, drop a follow, join the community. I love talking about audio just as much over there as I do here. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. For input with so that, ooh, ooh, so close. Um, and the water stream gets, the amount of compression uh, ugh, I always get tripped up right there. You want it to let go, but not so quickly that it, oh, balls, will let go once we've dropped, but enough that if that, five or four and a half dBs or decibels. Words, 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 words. And my hair is long. Like seriously, look at that. That's like, whew. Doesn't even fit the frame. Yikes.